The strange and sad ending of Robert Ryan, star of Crossfire 1947. Robert Ryan was born on November 11, 1909, in Chicago, Illinois, the first child of Mabel Arbutus, a secretary, and Timothy Aloysius Ryan, who was from a wealthy family who owned a real estate firm. He was of Irish and English descent. Ryan was raised Catholic and educated at Loyola Academy. He graduated from Dartmouth College in 1932, having held the school's heavyweight boxing title for all four years of his attendance, along with lettering in football and track. After graduation, Ryan found employment as a stoker on a ship that traveled to Africa, a WPA worker, a ranch hand in Montana, and other odd jobs. 5. He returned home in 1936 when his father died and after a brief stint modeling clothes for a department store, he decided to become an actor. In 1937 Ryan joined a little theater group in Chicago. The following year he enrolled in the Max Reinhardt workshop in Hollywood. His role in the 1939 play Too Many Husbands brought an offer from Paramount. Although he had done a screen test for them in 1938 and been turned down as not the right type, the studio offered him a $75 a week contract. In November 1939, Paramount signed Ryan to a six-month contract and announced he would play the lead in Golden Gloves, 1940, citing his boxing experience at Dartmouth. However, after a screen test with Gloves director Edward Dimitrik, the lead went to Richard Denning and Ryan was cast in a minor, but important role as a boxing ringer. He had his first credited role while making a lasting association with the director in which they would make several films together. He went to Broadway, where he was cast in a production of Clifford Odet's Clash by Night, 1941-42, directed by Lee Strasberg and produced by Billy Rose starring Tallulah Bankhead and Lee J. Cobb. It had a run of 49 performances, but was high profile and led to him being signed to a long-term contract by RKO. Ryan appeared in Bombardier, 1943, starring Pat O'Brien, and was fourth billed in the Fred Astaire musical The Sky's the Limit, 1943, playing a friend of Astaire. Both films were popular. He was fourth billed in Behind the Rising Sunday, 1943, directed by Dimitrik, which was a huge box office success. Ryan was third billed in The Iron Major, 1943, with O'Brien, and Gangway for Tomorrow, 1943. RKO promoted him to star status in Tender Comrade, 1943, where he was Ginger Rogers' leading man, directed for the third time by Dimitrik. It was a big hit. Also popular was Marine Raiders, 1944, which Ryan co-starred again alongside O'Brien. Ryan enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and served as a drill instructor from January 1944 to November 1945 at Camp Pendleton, in Southern California. At Camp Pendleton, he befriended writer and future director Richard Brooks, whose novel The Brick Foxhole he greatly admired. He also took up painting. When Ryan was discharged from the Marine Corps, he returned to RKO. They immediately cast Ryan in the Randolph Scott Western, Trail Street, 1947, which was very popular. However, his next film made with Joan Bennett, The Woman on the Beach, 1947, lost money. It was directed by Jean Renoir. Ryan's breakthrough role was as an anti-Semitic killer in the Dimitrik-directed film Noir Crossfire, 1947, co-starring Robert Young, Robert Mitchum, and Gloria Graham. Based on Brooks' novel, the film was highly successful at the box office, and received several Academy Award nominations including a Best Supporting Actor for Ryan's performance. MGM borrowed him to make Act of Violence, 1948, for Fred Zinnemann. He stayed at that studio to make Cot, 1949, for Max Ophels with James Mason. Back at RKO, Ryan had one of his best roles in the setup, 1949, directed by Robert Wise, as an over-the-hill boxer who is brutally punished for refusing to take a dive. 
The setup was a favorite of Ryan's. He was top billed in The Woman on Pier 13, 1949, an anti-communist melodrama directed by Robert Stevenson, that was made at the prompting of RKO's new owner, Howard Hughes. Ryan went to MGM where he played a villain in Anthony Mann's Western The Naked Spur, 1953, starring James Stewart. It was very popular. Ryan returned to RKO for Escape to Burma, 1955, with Stanwyck. More widely seen was Sam Fuller's House of Bamboo, 1955, and Raoul Walsh's The Tall Men, 1955, both at Fox. By now his fee was reported as $150,000 per film. Ryan made his television debut in 1955 as Abraham Lincoln in the Screen Director's Playhouse adaptation of Christopher Morley's story Lincoln's Doctor's Dog. As he explained to reporters, despite financial considerations, Ryan preferred to steer clear of any commitment to a TV series. In the summer of 1960 Ryan starred opposite Catherine Hepburn at the American Shakespeare Theater in Stratford, Connecticut playing Antony to Hepburn's Cleopatra. Ryan remained in high demand throughout the 1960s. He appeared in Ice Palace, 1960, with Richard Burton, a TV version of The Snows of Kilimanjaro directed by John Frankenheimer. He also appeared in the all-star war film The Longest Day, 1962, playing James M. Gavin. Ryan continued to appear in TV shows such as Wagon Train, The Reporter and Bob Hope Presents the Chrysler Theater. Ryan's only partial concession to featuring in an entire television series was his role as narrator in CBS's 26-episode acclaimed documentary homage to World War I, released in primetime during the 1964-65 season. In 1970 Ryan discovered he had inoperable cancer of the lymph glands. He decided to keep working, and said, I've had a good shot at life. Ryan supported Burt Lancaster in Lawman, 1971, and John Philip Law in The Love Machine, 1971. Ryan's final roles included The Man Without a Country, 1973, a TV movie for Delbert Mann, The Outfit, 1973, with Robert Duvall, Executive Action, 1973, with Lancaster, from a script by Dalton Trumbo, and a version of The Iceman Cometh, 1973, with Lee Marvin and director Frankenheimer. Ryan won the Kansas City Film Critics Circle Award for Best Supporting Actor, the National Board of Review Award for Best Actor, in a tie with Al Pacino, for Serpico, 36, and a special award from the National Society of Film Critics. The Iceman Cometh and Executive Action both were released in November 1973, after Ryan's death. In 1939, he married Jessica Cadwallader. They had three children and lived in the Dakota at 72nd and Central Park West in Manhattan and eventually sub-let the apartment to John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Robert and Jessica remained married until her death from cancer in 1972. Sadly. On July 11, 1973, Robert Ryan died from lung cancer in New York City at age 63. Goodbye Robert Ryan